Well, I've been a dentist in a downtown for a long time now, going back to my old Cosmic Airplane bookstore that I used to, to run back in the 1970s. It was around the corner on 1st South between 2nd and 3rd East on what used to be Old Film Row. The uh, Blue Mouse Theater was next door, the old art house, and the Cinegrill uh, restaurant at the time was just up the street. Cinegrill still survived, albeit in a, a new location. Blue Mouse is long gone. And this, I guess, uh, at this rare bookstore is my version of the reincarnation of the cosmic airplane, but without the head shop and the records and the incense. In the 1970s, it was just, it became a really hip little micro neighborhood because above the Blue Mouse, there were a lot of artist studios that, that people like Trent Harris and Scott Carrier and Diane Orr and a whole bunch of other people uh, rented and then uh, a few years after we opened, uh, Steve Holbrook's newly uh, online KRCL radio came aboard and their very first broadcast location was in the back of that old, the old Universal Theater building because that block of Salt Lake City was called Film Row. And that's where the restaurant, the Cinegrill's name came from because it was on Salt Lake's Film Row. And my rare book vaults at Cosmic Airplane were actually old cellulose nitrate film vaults. So the, if the film caught fire and, and burnt up, it would just, it was contained to that single vault that would vent it out the roof and wouldn't burn the entire building or the entire block down. Well, it was just, it was a real activist time in Salt Lake. There were just, you know, we were the first real alternative bookstore. You know, it was the only place you could get gay and lesbian literature. Crying out loud, it was the only place you could buy metaphysics or science fiction for that matter. So even science fiction was like considered exotic in this city then. And you know, it's, it's come a long way. And people, if you're over 40 or so, you, people still know the name, the Cosmic Airplane. And if you're younger than that, you never heard of it and it means nothing to you. Uh, but what I get from that, from, from then to now, and especially looking forward, you know, great cities aren't defined by chain restaurants and chain hotels and motels and, and just corporate America. All great cities, whether we're talking about San Francisco or New York or Seattle or Denver or smaller cities like Salt Lake, they're defined by a great weave and fabric of small independent businesses, even to micro businesses. Some get big and very successful and some come and go and disappear. I can't tell you the dozens and dozens of bookstores in this town that I can remember from just my time here. And it's really, you know, sh bodegas and shops and boutiques and little small independent businesses, whether they're retail or bars or, or, or what have you. And that, that's what really makes cities great. And I really think that <clears throat> downtown planners and city councils and state bureaucracies need to give more heed to us because we're we're really part of the fabric we we belong here we're from here we're of here and a lot of us intend to certainly at this point in my life I intend to stay here and I want a livable breathable vibrant downtown I'm Ken Sanders this is my downtown story <laughs>